A very good afternoon, everyone. I think, um, I'm not sure if you are still expecting um, a few of the, the others from the flip session. Um, but we are here to sort of soft launch the Game Changers program that we are go going to sort of um, carry out next year from January. Um, we shall play you the um, video and see what you think. Six weeks. Four missions. Twelve quests. One to pitch. One threat. Turn your learning into a game. Turn your teaching into a game. I'm a game changer. 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 I am a game changer. I'm a game changer. I am. So the question is, are you a game changer and are you willing to change what we are going to do in terms of teaching and learning and the way we do things, the way we solve problems? And Kate, Alex, myself and Tyrone have been working quite hard trying to figure out how can we support staff and students at university in trying to use game design thinking in solving problems. Um, I'm sure that um, all of you have seen different examples of the use of games in teaching and learning. What we're trying to do is to start from basic and see what sort of problems, what sort of challenges that we want to address and how we can actually use a more holistic approach in developing gamified, gameful, playful solutions to our challenges and to our problems and see how we can use different types of technology or non-technology to support what we're trying to do. And we are all designers. We look at different things, we solve different problems, all sorts of different ways. And Paul this morning talked about divergent thinking. So this is what we are trying to do. Look at a problem and try and see different solutions. Um, solution A, B, C, or even something that is totally bonkers. So this is what we are trying to do. And I can play you this video and um, just a quick look at why do we think... Hi there. The Have you noticed game. that the world is full of problems? There are big, hairy problems like poverty and disease and small annoyances like misplacing your keys. However, the geniuses at Stanford have come up with a process that will broaden your perspective and help you create better solutions, no matter the type of problem. This process is called design thinking, and it's here to change the way you tackle problems. Design thinking encourages people to explore new alternatives, creating options that had not existed before. Design thinking is successful because it focuses on the needs of the user. It's more than just good ergonomics, it's about understanding the context and culture of the stakeholders involved. This understanding is found using direct observation and qualitative data, which produces stories that people can really empathize with. Once the research is conducted, the problem solver is more apt to define what the real problem is. After diagnosing the true problem, it's time to ideate or brainstorm new ideas without the constraints of existing solutions. Because design thinkers learn by doing, these radical ideas are then made into simple prototypes that test possible outcomes. Rapid prototyping speeds up the innovation process because we only learn about the quality of our ideas when we test them in the real world. The process of ideating, prototyping, and testing is repeated early on so that mistakes are quick and cheap and ultimately lead to success. So, why design thinking? The process provides a method and a unifying language for multidisciplinary collaboration, leading to greater creativity and better solutions faster. Suddenly, the world's problems are simple and manageable with design thinking. So this is one of the uh, basic foundation of what we are trying to do is to look at design thinking and game design thinking will provide a fantastic platform to look at something in a fun way. We are talking about objectives, we are talking about rules, we are talking about mechanics, dynamics, the social 
aspect of games as well. And I think it's quite interesting to see how staff and students can actually work together. Um, staff and students from different faculties, from different disciplines, and see if we can now share our knowledge and learn about the different contexts within which we want to solve um, different problems and challenges. And this is one of the things that we are going to support next year. And this is a simplistic representation of what we are trying to do. As we have said before, six weeks, four main missions. We've got 12 quests, one pitch, and one sprint. <laughs> um, so if you look at it, it's quite a holistic approach in trying to level up in terms of understanding the problems that we're trying to solve. And I'm sure the students will have interesting ideas of what they want to look at and address. Um, lecturers can actually think about how do you want to use game design techniques in your teaching. And you might even want to connect this with some of the um, more formal assessment or um, modules and assignments that you want to actually embed in this particular programs as well. And we are, we are, we are, we are happy to sort of discuss all the different possibilities in how we can actually support all of you, students and staff, together. Um, so the first mission is looking at a problem. The second mission is trying to think about creative design and um, surrounding this particular problem and challenge. And the third one is talking about Right, we've got this designed. Are we going to create a digital game? Is it going to be a board game? Is it going to be a card game? Is it going to be a gamified role playing? Or is it something that we can use within a flipped classroom sort of setup? So these are the things that we can work with you and try and see if we can provide something that will be interesting in week four and week five, where we are going to sort of pitch it to the industrial industry, industry experts, to the university, the community, the students as well, and see whether the idea is worth developing. And the sprint part of this particular program is based on a five-day intensive program where you've got your foundations, you've got your ideas, you've got your design. Now we are going to help you in terms of developing prototypes in all sorts of different ways. We've got links with um, the use of um, 3D printers. If you're interested in creating um, board games, you can create sort of um, little counters. counters and whatnot. <laughs> um, so there are all sorts of different ways that we can look at this. So we want to have fun. We want students and lecturers to work together and have a bit of fun on top of you know the uh, studying and uh, all sorts of different things they're trying to do. But if if, if you can think that you can actually embed this in a more formal setup as well, we can support you. And we are having all sorts of different chats with different people from across the university who are interested to embed this program into the course, which I find interesting because we can actually use the same sort of context in all sorts of different ways. When we will start in January, uh, in the gamification world, we call it onboarding. We're trying to get people interested, we're trying try, try to get you into groups, trying to get you into pairs perhaps. You might, you might come in with your own group, or you might want to come in and say that I want to find myself some students or staff that I can actually work with for, for, for the next six weeks. And the program will start in February. So we will provide all sorts of different resources, open resources, um, different models, different tools that all of us can actually use. And this is also within the context of flipped learning as well. We'll provide all the different resources and we will organize open workshops for everyone to come in and then we can talk about your design, we can talk about how we can support you, we can, we can bring in external experts, we can bring in external speakers. And this is like a joint program, so any speakers, anyone do you think that uh, who can actually talk about design thinking, who can talk about game design, who can talk about different ways of designing a lesson or designing your course, or designing your module, um, you are free to have a chat with us and then we can try and see if we can support you. And you can register at gamify.org.uk. So you can actually send your 
um, you can register your emails, we can, we can give you updates, and then we can sort of set up meetings, we can set up workshops, so that all of us can actually start thinking about these interesting ideas that we want to <coughs> develop next year. Um, so the aim is, of course, you want to have some game design prototypes at, at the end of it. There will be a showcase in March 2016. That is the next expo. So we can show off, showcase the different things that we have done for the past six weeks. And we can try and get the university to support it. And the MLL, um, the lab is going to provide different awards on best design, best applied games, or you know the, 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 the different awards that we can come up with. That will be linked to possibly the conference for teaching and learning in June next year. So we want to get staff and students showcased um, so that they can demonstrate what they can do, what they can do together collectively. Yeah, so you create your own group, find your own group, staff and students, and we will, we will give you more information on the structure, um, on the gamified structure with um, the objectives, the mechanics and dynamics and how I'm going to work together. Yeah, these are some of the example things you can think about. You can create like a game book. It doesn't have to be digital technology. It could be um, board games, it could be card games. This is one of the example of a collaboration between staff and student working on a location-based game to support the teaching of Italian language. Um, so Tyrone here is one of our student intern from the e, from the ENC and is working with staff from the um, arts and humanities. Um, so you can see that we can actually work together collectively, staff and students, and try and come up with new solutions to, to our teaching and learning. And we can provide um, support for this as well and different tools that you can use. And for this particular project, we are working with the MIT. So they are provi providing a platform um, that we use to create this, this particular app. <coughs> so, your first quest. We've got three key questions. You can tweet it, or you can go to the website um, and then let us know what you think and uh, what your ideas are. What are, what, are, what are your game ideas? Why would you like to take part? And how would you like to engage with the Game Changers community? Give us some, like what Paul said, divergent thinking. Think of something that is so different, something that is interesting, something that you think might um, support you in your teaching, might support you in your learning, um, and see how we can actually include this in the program that we're going to run next year. So now, <laughs> this session is for you to tweet us your answers and if you have any questions as well so all of us are here so we can actually answer difficult easy questions hi uh, Christoph here from the Open University uh, two, two questions is yeah. it just internal can we play? <laughs> <laughs> at the moment uh, we are piloting this at the university, but we are bringing in external partners and experts as well. So if Open University is interested to get involved in different ways, in our workshops, and in, 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 in try to support I think some of the things that we're doing, you are free to do so and we can have further chats about it. But our plan is, after we have done the pilot, we are going to work with Fab Lab, with the University City um, Initiative. We are going to sort of bring it outside of the outside, outside the university and, 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 and get the community involved as well. Because even when we talk about um, this campaign that, that, that we have, I receive a lot of emails from um, partners, lecturers at the university because they, you know, they've been talking about it and they said that we are interested to get involved. My daughter, my son want to get involved in game design, thinking, can we join this, this, this part? I said, um, not yet. <laughs> Wait till we make sure that everything is working fine. And, uh, okay, uh, I mean, one way of maybe taking that to the next step in the future is make sure it's all open source. So all the games you do design are templated and just by replacing the data, someone else can use it. Um, and then if the 
spirit of the project is that everyone puts back in that could be good fun. Uh, absolutely it's like this website that we're showing you we are pro we are going to provide open res resources so anyone can get access it and the outcome of this as well it depends on how we develop the idea but the principle is everything will be open open access uh, unless if we are actually working with an in, you know a, a company outside of the university and that would be in a different sort of model any other questions just one thing one thing to add based on what you just said there the plan for the different programs is every group would submit all their work for their game, but everything that they produce would also be open. So rather than having groups very competitively keeping all their ideas together and then last minute check this out, they've done this amazing game. The idea is that any other group could see what everyone else is working on and learn from each other rather than letting that happen. So have it rather than walled gardens, wanted everything to be completely open and flat. So that kind of there will be not only the program which will be open, but everything that everyone does will be open too. Yes, Alex. I'm really excited. I can just see so much. I've, I, I've already got more than one idea mm. and lots of ways of delivering it. And, Fantastic. Um, so, but I'm, am I right in understanding that basically anything that's going to enhance what we do with our students is up for grabs? We can look at any aspect of what we do whether it's teaching or um, personal tutorial schemes um, supervising project anything absolutely absolutely and i've got someone who is interested in possibly using this as part of the dissertation so they will go through this process and they would actually write up about it okay. so. Uh, so so one example if i could just give you an idea yep and just tell me if you yep. think this is the sort of thing. I've already yep. tweeted it. Because um, I'm <laughs> tweeting away now. I've just become a Twitter. So I'm so excited. Um, so, um, uh, so this Welcome Week, I tried to kind of do um, a Finding Your Feet activity with my students. Hmm. And I used some uh, electronic delivery methods. But looking at the little game example you put up, I thought it would be so interesting to have um, an app based, uh, it's like a treasure hunt really, yep. to find your feet, to familiarise yourself with the environments yep. of Coventry yep. the City, yep. the university resources yep. and kind of have, you know, you get to one yep. location, it's location, um, um, what's it called, location? Base, aware. awareness. Is yeah. it aware? Yeah. And so it knows you're there and yep. then it kind of, you know, creates sort of excitement and tweeting and in, embeds tweeting and or some kind of, is this the sort of thing that we could do? This is the sort of thing that we can explore. And what we're, we're doing with the app as well, we are actually, it's location-based. Uh, you go around Coventry and you learn about the history and you go to the cathedral and suddenly something just pop up. Right, this is what you need to do now. Can you answer these questions in Italian? That thing. So you can actually do all sorts of different things. The placeholders are there. It's like oh, uh, the design is there. So you can just pop in different things. And this are definitely something so I could that do a modified version <laughs> of that, and that's absolutely. just one idea. So absolutely. fantastic! Absolutely. I'm so excited. Yeah, Thank and you. I would I would encourage people to get involved in that as well because we are going to be the um, what was it again? Global flagship for uh, Tail Blazer, which is the name of the platform at the MIT. So they have selected us as one of the um, global hotspot. So well done. That's yeah. exciting. Thank you. Like you mentioned there, if you do have an idea and you don't necessarily have a team of people ready to help you build it, then provide that for the community. So as this develops, we'll have, I mean, there are game design students who everyone expects that they've got great ideas for games and they want to work on their own stuff, but it turns out, after speaking with them, they're interested in other people's games. So they maybe they use that as part of their their course, so they might use it within a module, it might be to build someone else's game. <laughs> Good. Exactly. So even if you have an idea that you can't produce yourself, then share that with the community and hopefully we can bring a group together and, and develop that game. Any other questions? Just as a final comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had quite a few people come up to us and say, well, I don't know how to make a game full stop. The idea is that this is actually being designed based on my knowledge of how to make a game, which is zero. <laughs> so. 
the, the whole idea of it is that anybody can pick it up. So it really is just a back pocket of resources, open resources that, you know, that should help you feel confident with generating an idea, kind of, and then really just going with it, really, I guess. So I just wanted to make that point in case it wasn't that clear. So even if you just want to have a little go with a game, it just, you don't have to dedicate an awful lot of time. So all we're just saying is give us a go <laughs> so, and help us. <laughs> so. One last question, maybe. Everyone's happy? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much, everyone.